Hi there. Today we're going to make an Irish classic, soda bread. So next to St. Patrick's Day, don't make green cupcakes. Make something authentic, something that the Irish actually ate. Okay, so we're going to start with four cups of flour. So here I have a bleached white flour. Now traditionally you would use whole wheat flour. You can also do two cups whole wheat, two cups of white if you want to kind of test that out. Okay, so I actually have never used the all white flour, so I wanted to try that this time. Okay, so we've got that, and this is super, super easy. Four ingredients, can't mess it up. Okay, teaspoon of salt. And the magic ingredient, teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, so that is how you get the soda bread, right, from the baking soda. Now, the Irish would not have been able to start making this bread until about 1840 when they had the invention of baking soda. Now, baking soda is your leavening agent. This is what makes your bread rise. Okay, we can hear my oven just got warm. Okay, so now before 1840, they would have had to use uh, wheat, right? Now, if you've ever made whole wheat bread, you've got to, you know, um, let the dough rise and then you punch it down, let it rise again, form it into loaves, let it rise again, and six hours later you can finally put your bread in the oven. This is going to be bread made and mixed up, cooked, baked in less than an hour, so it's perfect, perfect to make. Okay, so as a historian, bread is actually really, really significant. So if we look at European history, bread was 90% of your of a European person's diet from about 750 to well until about 1900. That's mostly what people ate. So imagine all day all you had was bread and little else. Now peasants would supplement with vegetables, potatoes, carrots, turnips, whatever they had in their area, and then fresh fruit in the summer, whatever they could pick. Most peasants didn't have a lot of access to meat. If they had a dairy cow or goat, they usually sold most of the cheese and butter at the market. Of course, middle class families lived in the cities and they'd have more access. You could buy meat in small quantities and cheeses and, and maybe even some sweet treats. Now your wealthy, your, noble, your nobility would have everything, every luxury, every kind of meat, sweet, sugar. Sugar was still expensive, um, say during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Europeans even went so far as to have what we call game laws. So in England and France, this allowed uh, the, only the nobility to hunt in the forest. So if you're a poor peasant starving and you go kill a squirrel, you could be in prison for poaching. Only the nobility were able to hunt, either for pleasure or for food. So what did they eat? They ate bread, right? So this is definitely pretty uh, significant for uh, the nerdy historian here. Okay, so let's add our last ingredient. Okay, about 14 to 16 ounces of buttermilk. Okay, there's eight. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do the full 16 because I needed a little bit more on my test loaf yesterday. Okay, so you wanna start mixing that up. All right, so we've got flour, salt, baking soda, and buttermilk. Okay, it's almost like a biscuit dough, but missing that uh, Crisco or butter, right? Missing the fat element. Now, bread's so important that um, what, what happens if you have a bad crop, right? And, and you don't have enough wheat to make bread and feed people. Well, you have riots. This is actually what started the French Revolution, right? A bunch of bad harvests, right? Raising um, high prices of of wheat and you suddenly have women, mobs of armed women marching in the streets begging for bread, right, for lower priced wheat. Same thing in England, um, some of the nobles, right, they're in parliament, they add arbitrarily fixed prices for bread, they fix it high for the grain and people can't afford it and so they march in the streets. Okay, this is where we get that, uh, you know, that saying that Marie Antoinette uh, in France said, oh, well, they don't have any bread, let them eat cake. She actually, she actually never said that, but I'll save that for another segment. But obviously, if you don't have enough wheat for bread, you, you, you can't afford wheat for cake, right? 
Okay, so this is starting to come together here. Okay. Now this is uh, one of those fun kind of hands-on. Okay, so we're gonna need it just a few minutes, all right? This is not gonna be one of those breads that you have to need for 15 minutes or feel like, oh, you know, you need to go get the, the dough hook attachment on your KitchenAid. Okay, let's get a little flour on the hands here. Okay, I'm just gonna dump it out. All right, okay. So you want to need for a few minutes to get it to come together into an actual loaf here. Okay, now if you've never actually made bread before, it, this is kind of, a, you just got to kind of feel it out. And over time you realize, oh yeah, that's what it should look like. Okay, my grandma could knead dough like nobody's business. Man, 90 years old, and she'd be making fun of me and my mom about how uh, how sh not strong we were and how quickly we'd give up. Okay, so um, all I've done is make it kind of come into to a ball, right? Make it shape up. So traditionally, your soda bread should be a round disc, and it's more of a square. Darn it. Okay, so I'm going to try to kind of shape that out. Now, if your dough is a little dry, you can add a little bit more buttermilk. If it's really sticky, you want to add some more flour, just sprinkle it on top. I usually end up adding too much flour. This is actually pretty nice. Okay, it's not super round, but I'm going to go with this. Okay, so I have um, a pan that I've already greased with a little bit of butter. So just put it on top there. Ooh, I forgot my knife. Okay. So in Southern Ireland, they would put a cross on the dough, right? Ward off those evil spirits. And then when it bakes up, you've got four big, four big pieces there. Now in the North, they would cut it like a pie. So you might have, you know, eight shapes in a pie. And then that way you can, when it bakes up, you can cut that off. Okay, so that's that's it, right? We did four cups of flour, a teaspoon baking soda, a teaspoon salt, um, 16 ounces of buttermilk, and we're ready to go. Okay, so bake this at 425 degrees. Now, if you want to go traditional, what you would do is um, put your disc here and then cover it with an oven safe pot. So in the 1840s, the Irish didn't have a closed oven. They would base, uh, cook this in a basting pot or your black kettle pot and maybe put the lid on it. So if you want that effect, put the pot on it, cook it for 30 minutes, and then remove the pot and bake for maybe another 10 to 15 minutes till the crust is nice, or the bread is crusty and golden brown. I just went ahead and baked it like this for 30 to 35 minutes. Okay, so we'll do that. Now this one, actually, uh, I made yesterday, and we already ate half of it. So here you can see the cross here, and then the other cross was here. So you can actually break it right into two pieces. Okay, so let's give this one a taste. This is good. We, were, we already, uh, it didn't last long. Okay, now I cheated on this one. You see how easy it is to cut? You can't hear the the crusty crunchiness when your soda bread comes out it's going to be very crusty very hard now the traditional way to soften it up would be put a damp towel on it and that'll kind of soften up the crust well i went a little cross-cultural on this one so my mom's side of the family is czech and when you get your clotches out of the oven, you baste them in heavy cream. So I did that. Also your biscuits, before they go in the oven, biscuits and scones, you can baste with heavy cream and that'll keep them soft. So this one I softened up. The, this loaf that I'm gonna bake, I'm gonna leave crusty and make some um, bruschetta out of it, I think. Okay, so let's give, I'm gonna eat a little tiny piece here. Dropping it. This is really good. So. It's almost like a biscuit. It's a real kind of thick texture. And you can put butter, jellies, whatever you want on it. We ate this for, uh, for breakfast yesterday with some bacon and eggs. It's just really nice, um, you know, to add to any meal. Like I said, you can leave it crusty if you want, you know, something a little thicker. 
But no matter how hard the crust is, don't be afraid. The inside is always super moist, right? You can just kind of pull it apart. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's segment and you make your soda bread less than an hour, super easy, have fun with it. And remember, uh, we've got to have a little history with it, right? Makes everything, food makes that history a little bit better. Okay, stay tuned.